The air crackled with anticipation. The year was 1974 and the place was CBGB, a dingy bar in New York City's Bowery. The Ramones took the stage. Their ripped jeans and leather jackets were a middle finger to the peace and love aesthetic of the fading hippie era. They plugged in their instruments. A wall of sound, raw and untamed, slammed into the audience. This was not flower power, this was punk rock. Punk rock wasn't just a musical genre, it was a cultural explosion, a sonic Molotov cocktail hurled at the status quo. Born in the decaying urban landscapes of 1970s America, punk was a guttural scream against social conformity and artistic stagnation. It was a rejection of the bloated, self-indulgent rock that dominated the airwaves. Punk was raw, it was immediate, and it was about to change everything. The seeds of punk had been sown earlier in the decade, germinating in the underground rock scenes of New York and Detroit. Bands like the Velvet Underground, with their avant-garde noise and Lou Reed's streetwise poetry, provided a blueprint for punk's raw energy. The Stooges, fronted by the electrifyingly unpredictable Iggy Pop, pushed the boundaries of rock performance with their primal stage antics and confrontational lyrics. Punk was music for the disenfranchised, the outcasts, the kids who felt alienated by the prevailing culture. It was a DIY movement built on a spirit of independence and a rejection of the music industry's slick commercialism. Punk wasn't about technical virtuosity, it was about attitude, energy and raw emotion. It was about making a statement, even if that statement was just a primal scream against the void. Punk's roots weren't confined to the grimy streets of New York City. In the industrial heartland of Detroit, Michigan, a band called the MC5 was already unleashing a sonic assault that would become a major influence on the burgeoning punk scene. Formed in 1964, the MC5, short for Motor City 5, combined the raw power of rock and roll with politically charged lyrics that directly challenged the Vietnam War and social injustice. Their incendiary live performances, often featuring radical political speeches by frontman Rob Tyner, became legendary in the Detroit underground. The MC5's music, a potent blend of garage rock, psychedelia and R&B, was characterized by Wayne Kramer's blistering guitar riffs and the band's relentless energy. Their 1969 debut album, Kick Out the Jams, recorded live at Detroit's Grand Ballroom, captured the raw power and rebellious spirit that would become synonymous with punk rock. The album's title track, a call to arms for a generation disillusioned with the status quo, became an anthem for the burgeoning counterculture. Meanwhile, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, another band was pushing the boundaries of rock and roll with even greater ferocity. The Stooges, led by the charismatic and volatile Iggy Pop, were known for their chaotic and confrontational live shows. Pop, often performing shirtless and covered in peanut butter, became punk rock's first true wild man, his unpredictable stage presence both mesmerizing and terrifying. The Stooges' music was a raw and primal assault on the senses, combining elements of garage rock, blues and free jazz. Their 1969 self-titled debut album produced by the Velvet Underground's John Cale featured songs like I Wanna Be Your Dog and No Fun that became proto-punk classics, their raw energy and nihilistic lyrics anticipating the punk explosion to come. The Stooges' influence on punk rock is immeasurable, their spirit of anarchy and sonic aggression paving the way for countless bands to follow. Before CBGB became synonymous with punk rock, there was Max's Kansas City. This legendary nightclub, located at 213 Park Avenue in New York City, was a haven for artists, musicians and writers in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Andy Warhol, held court there, his entourage of factory superstars adding to the club's allure. Musicians like the Velvet Underground, the New York Dolls and Patti Smith were regulars, their performances shaping the sound and attitude of the burgeoning punk scene. Max's Kansas City was more than just a nightclub. It was a cultural crossroads, a place where different artistic disciplines collided and new ideas were born. It was in this fertile environment that the seeds of punk rock were sown. Nurtured by a spirit of experimentation and a rejection of mainstream conventions, Max's Kansas City closed its doors in 1981, but its legacy as a breeding ground for punk rock and other alternative movements remained secure. By the mid-1970s, CBGB, a former biker bar located at 315 Bowery in New York City's East Village, had become the epicenter of the punk rock scene. The club's name, an acronym for country bluegrass and blues, was a misnomer, as it soon became a haven for the most raw and rebellious sounds in the city. CBGB's owner, Hilly Kristall, had a knack for spotting new talent, and he gave a platform to bands that were too raw, too loud, or too unconventional for the mainstream clubs. CBGB's stage was graced by the Ramones, Blondie, Television, Patti Smith, Talking Heads, and countless other bands that would shape the sound of punk rock. 
The club was a melting pot of creativity, a place where musicians, artists, writers and fans from all walks of life came together to celebrate the raw energy and rebellious spirit of punk. CBGB closed its doors in 2006, but its legacy as the birthplace of punk rock remains undisputed. Punk wasn't just about the music, it was a complete aesthetic, a fusion of art and aggression. The visuals were as raw and provocative as the sound. As punk rock thundered from the streets of London, it wasn't long before it caught fire across the pond. American bands took the essence and spun it into something distinctly their own. The punk look was unmistakable, torn clothing, safety pins and spiked hair. It wasn't just fashion, it was a badge of defiance against mainstream culture. Punk has morphed over the decades, but its spirit of rebellion remains intact. It's a movement that continues to influence music, fashion and art worldwide.